Uh, for this example, to apply MCAT, I'm going after neutralization, which is exothermic reaction. I have a base potassium hydroxide reacting with hydrochloric acid. It produces potassium chloride and water, H2O. Usually this reaction, we do it in styrofoam cups. You put two of them together. It's a good insulator. You wait for your solutions to have their room temperature or same initial temperature. You dump them into the cup and usually inside the cup you also have a mixer and you have a thermometer. We cover it up in order to insulate it as much as we can so the heat is not lost to the environment. We keep track of the temperature, and this was the case here. Uh, so I'm going to calculate uh, the heat of the reaction first, which is Mc delta T. What is my mass, mass of the liquid? I'm going to make a couple of assumptions, uh, or actually one assumption, that the solutions are dilute. And they have properties of water, such as density of this solution, potassium hydroxide plus HCO is same as density of H2O. By doing that assumption, we can say 100 cm cube is like 100 grams, because every one centimeter cube is one gram for water. So I have 100 grams for KOH, 100 grams for HCO, so my total mass is 200 grams. The second assumption is heat capacity of this solution. We are going to say is same as heat capacity of water because it's dilute and it's 4.18 joules per gram per degree Kelvin. Let's plug it in. So Q equals 200 grams multiplied by 4.18 joules gram degree Kelvin times the difference in temperature is 30.1 subtract 24, 6.1 Celsius or Kelvin. Kelvins cancel each other out, grams cancel each other out. Your final answer at this stage is 59.9.6 joules. We always report it in kilojoules, so I divide it by a thousand. So I have uh, 5.10 kilojoules. That's my heat. Now I need to go and find my enthalpy, which is delta H of this reaction is amount of heat released divided by moles of reactant or limiting reactant. Now in this case moles of potassium hydroxide is same as moles of HCl because they have the same concentration and same amount of volume. So I take concentration of 1, which is 1 mole per decimeter cube, multiplied by the volume. Now don't forget, you have to convert it to decimeter cube. Take it three decimal places to the left, decimeter cube, and it becomes 0.1 mole. So final answer, delta H is equal to 5.1 kilojoules divided by 0.1 moles is equal to 51 kilojoules per mole. And the last thing you should remember, since it's exothermic, temperature is increasing, there is a minus in front of it. Uh, the usual answer uh, for neutralization is negative 57 kilojoules. This is a good experiment to do in school laboratory. We are within maximum 10% error. Uh, usually there is a follow-up question. The next question I'm going after is the same reaction. What happens if I change the amount? For example, instead of 100 cm cube and 100 cm cube, I put twice as much. What happens to your delta T? And I'm going to look at that problem, not solving it, uh, but just going over it. So I have exactly identical as first problem, except now I have twice the amount. Now let's just look at the first reaction on the last slide, which Q1, if you remember, was 5.1 kilojoules. 
it was equal to mass of the uh, solutions which was 200 grams we added 100 and 100 times the heat capacity I still leave it as C it's a constant times delta T now delta T was 6.1 degree Kelvin now what happens to the second reaction if I have 200 plus 200 which is 400 grams times the heat capacity times the delta T now the deal is this if you if you release 5.1 kilojoules for every 200 grams for 400 grams it should make uh, somehow sense that I need twice as much which is 10.2 kilojoules it takes 5.1 kilojoules to change temperature of 200 then it should be twice as much to change temperature of 400 therefore delta T is identical as before so delta T is 6.1 degrees Celsius now why is that because heat is total energy of the system which is quantity based and the temperature is just simply average kinetic energy I'll give you one other example if that didn't make sense let's just look at heat capacity of water one more time specific heat capacity was 4.18 joules per gram per degree celsius meaning this that 4.18 joules is required to raise the temperature of one gram of water by one degree celsius this is my delta t what happens if i have two grams two grams of water and if i have one degree celsius delta t as well how much energy do I need to raise that temperature it should be twice as much so it's 4.18 times 2 which is 8.36 joules if you agree so once you change the quantity you are also changing the heat but the delta T stays as is I hope it made some sense delta T